Hello everyone, Paul here. And I thought today I would show you how I keep my hard disk in my iMac up to snuff. And I do this probably uh, once a month. So this is what I do. Starting off from this screen, I go to Applications. And all the way on the bottom, you're going to see another file folder called Utilities. If you open up Utilities, you want to get to your Disk Utility application. And that's it right here. You click that. And from here, you'll see your hard drives attached on the left. Up here you have verify info which is grayed out because you didn't pick a, a disk yet. Um, burn, uh, mount, eject, enable journaling, new image, convert, and resize image. Okay, so basically this is my external drive that I use for backup. This is here the actual name of the drive. This is the drive that's actually in my computer and it's named IMAX A. So I'm going to click here and it opens up another window. Now if you look here on the right you'll see that on the bottom it says verify disk permissions and repair disk permissions and on the right hand side verify disk. So usually what I do first off is verify disk permissions. You click this, you'll see down here on the right the estimated time is less than a minute. This will run and this will locate any problems with verifying with uh, with permissions. Now we got one here, okay? It's gonna find a couple maybe. If it does, um, I will clear the history I just like to do that because otherwise it gets kind of confusing, but you can leave it up there if you like. But I'll clear the history and I will do repair disk permissions. And that should take care of that problem. And then I'll go over here to the bottom right and I'll do verify disk. You can see here the completion bar is almost done. Now depending on the size of your hard drive, it's going to take a little time and how much information you have on the drive. Now if you look down here while that's working you can actually see that this disk is formatted with Mac OS extended and journaled. I like everything journaled. The owner enabled, yes. Number of folders, capacity and what's available. You see it's a one terabyte drive and I have almost half available used a little more than half and the number of files so you see this is still running okay so it's it's doing its thing and it's finding any problems which is good and that's what you wanted to do you know it doesn't take too long to do this and it's very very well worth it um, and if you find something wrong that it can't be repaired here you would probably have to go ahead and reboot it up to the disk utility. And that I can show you in another video. So we're waiting for this to complete. And I might just edit this part out. If it takes too long. Okay, so if you look here, you'll see that there are some errors. Should be, should be, should be, not expected, not expected. So we do have some problems. So what I do is I clear that and I do repair disk permissions. And now I let this run. This probably will run about the same amount of time. And, um, for the video purposes, I might cut it short.
And if you notice, some cannot be repaired, and that's okay. But if you look at the timeline, it's going. And this is probably not as accurate as it seems, you know, estimated time less than a minute. It's estimated and not too good of an estimation, if you ask me. So this process probably takes two minutes or so. Okay, so permissions have been repaired. So now what I do, clear the history again, and I go to verify disk. And this will probably take a little time also, but usually this is okay. And uh, this is saying seven minutes, so I'll probably jump this right across for recording sake so you don't have to sit there and watch this but Okay, very good. So we're finished, and that's it for that. Now what I do is I usually close this out, and now I go back into Applications, and I use a little file program called CCleaner right here. You can get the free app. They also have a paid version, but I use the free one. What this does is basically erases all the trash, cleans out all the cache for your different browsers, and just keeps your disk clean. And you see everything here under Safari for my web browser. It'll clean the cache, the history, the cookies, download history, under the system, the trash, the recent documents, recent applications, recent servers, recent places, logs directory service and on and on so you can see that it does quite a bit and if you go to applications these are the applications that it's going to clean up now pixelmator was new so I'll put that in and Wirecast actually I think I'm gonna leave Wirecast out because I do a lot of recording with that and I save a lot of settings and stuff I might not want that cleaned out so this also under Google saved form information. If you have um, forms and stuff that you fill out all the time under Google, that will 
save those, your name, your address, phone number. You don't want to wipe that out. So I leave that unchecked. And then on the Firefox, basically the same thing, saved form information and saved passwords. Now, if you have passwords that you want to keep, uh, don't check that. Okay. And then what I do is I hit analyze. And what this will do, it will run and it will analyze the drive for all that is checked. Everything that's checked there. And this could take a little time if it hasn't been run in a while. I've seen this run for 10, 15 minutes sometimes. But this I use a lot. I love this program. Uh, really keeps my drive clean, free from gunk. And it does help it uh, run a little better. Now, if you have the time, and you should do this every once in a while, and I would suggest doing it maybe before you go to bed or if you're going out somewhere, because it's going to take a, take a long time to, to do, and that's to erase the uh, blank space, the unused portion of the drive. It gets remnants and little pieces of files, and um, it's good to clean that, but I'll show you that in the next section. Okay, so this is all the stuff that it found in the analysis, okay? These are all the files in internet cache. That's how much space it's taking, 13,000 kilobyte. Google Chrome internet cache, 403 kilobyte, 900 and 73 files. So you could see that you will regain all this miscellaneous cache. Okay, so you'll gain all this space and keep the drive clean. It tells you up here 670 megabyte you will reclaim and you'll clean 3,000 files. So I hit run cleaner and it's going to run. Okay, you can see the status bar up top. And um, this, I believe, helps tremendously with the drive, keeping it clean and free. Now, you can leave it like this, but what I like to do is hit Analyze again, and it shows you the difference from this screen. If you see this screen, right? Now, when I hit Analyze, it's going to go faster, and it's going to show you that it's all gone, okay? All right, so now back over on the left, that's cleaner. Now, if you jump down to Tools, you have Uninstall. You can uninstall your programs from here. You can see which programs start up automatically when I boot. Um, if you had to, which we already did this, you could repair permission. But I like to do that through um, the disk utility that we did before. Um, and then erase the free space. And that's what I was talking about earlier. It's good to erase the free space every once in a while, but you need time to do it. It takes a little time. You know, it runs for a while. And you pick the volume, which in my case, this would be the hard drive, one terabyte hard drive for my iMac. And this is my backup drive, which is also one terabyte. But if you did this, you would say, click here, erase space. But... The security is zero out, seven pass erase, or 35 pass erase. Now, I'll tell you, it takes long enough to do it on zero. If you did it on 35, it would probably take days, depending on how much free space you have. So, uh, if you're selling the computer to someone, you want to get rid of it, okay? Um, basically, that's what you would do you would probably want to reinstall a fresh version of the operating system with nothing on it. And then you would come into this with this program, install this program and um, do the 35 pass and let it run for a day or so. And when it's finished, then you can give it to whoever. So that's what this is. But this is good to do every so often on 
zero out if it's for yourself. Um, then you have options and your different settings, normal file deletion or secure file deletion. You know, if it's for your own home and your own personal use, you're not getting rid of the computer. Uh, normal file deletion is fine. Uh, here's all your cookies. Cookies to delete, cookies to keep. So if you had cookies from a certain place that you would use all the time, say MySpace, you would highlight it, move it over here. Now when you do your clean, it will not take that cookie out. But uh, I don't have too many that I worry about. But that's what that's for. Um, this is, they're, they're mostly pretty uh, self-explanatory. You know, which ones to include, exclude, and different languages, which I always have it on English. And that's pretty much it. And um, then I would close this. And I pretty much would do maybe one more thing. And that is I defrag. Now, I defrag, people say that uh, you don't really need it. You don't need to defrag after, I don't know, I think version 8 or 7. But um, I still do it. And I like it. So what I do basically is I come up here, I pick my version or my drive, and you have to unlock it, which... I will do now. Okay, little padlock opens. And quick online is fine. Now, right now it's analyzing. If you look on the bottom, it's reading all the extents and it's analyzing the disk. This could take quite a while. Now, if you look up here, it says choose a defragmentation algorithm. Now I have it on quick online. Anything else you do here, compact, metadata, optimize, or full defrag, you have to reboot. It needs priority. So I always usually use quick online. So once this is finished here reading, you don't really have to wait. But once it's finished reading, that's just to give you a visual. You can come right in here and just hit go. When you hit go, it's going to read. Start reading down here. This is your indicator. Reading extents, reading. It's going to go ahead and read that anyway now again. And then it's going to start to defrag. And you're going to see it jumping around. All these little dots. It'll give you a little... Um, Keys, if you look here, here's your keys. Fragmented is red, bad blocks are black, um, which they'll be marked, um, and so on. And you could keep that up in the corner if you like. Um, this here is a zoom in and zoom out. You know, you can make the blocks bigger, really zoom in. Or you can bring it all the way down to no blocks. It's nice to leave it around there. And I don't need that. And now what I do is I wait for the reading to complete. And she will jump right into the defrag. And you'll notice that you'll start seeing this bar right here that's grayed out. It will turn colors to match the key colors. And you'll notice that there'll be a lot of fragmented. The thing with the quick online you're going to still see some red lines, some red fragmented pieces in here um, when it's finished. Not too many, but you see here? Okay, now you're going to see this thing go. There she goes. It's going to start moving files. And basically what this is doing is taking the files and putting them in some type of order so the computer can locate them quicker. It's... It's just like taking a filing cabinet and alphabetizing the files. So when you know when you need to go in there and find a file that begins with B, A, you know where to go and look. 
um, you know, imagine having that file cabinet with all the files mixed in there. You'd have to go through every file every time to find that file. This way, if it's alphabetized, you go in and you can find your file pretty quick. Well, that's what the computer's doing right now to the files. And if you notice, it's jumping around pretty quick here. And that's what you want. You want it to move all these files. And here's the marker down here. You'll see it jumping. And like I say, most of the time, it'll get rid of all the fragmented files, the red ones, um, in the quick online version of defrag. But then again, sometimes it doesn't. And I don't think you really have to go ahead and do a full-fledged, full defrag. I'll tell you the truth, I would probably do it maybe, maybe once every six months if, you, if your computer started to really slow down. Because this slows it down because, like I say, when the computer's looking for files, it has to hunt all through that hard drive to find the file because it's not in any type of order. They get kind of mixed up and placed in different spots. When you erase files, that's what leaves these white blank spots, and files get fragmented. So when the computer's running and looking for different files, it has to hunt all around that disk, whereas if it's defragmented, and that's what we're doing now, it's putting those files into some sort of order so the computer can find them quickly. Okay? I hope that explains it. So this is good to do every so often. The quick one you can do once a month. It's not going to hurt anything, and uh, it's going pretty quick, if you notice down here. Um, like I say, it might not get rid of all the red, but it will be in enough of a chronological order for the computer to be able to find those files quickly. Okay, it's almost done. Okay, it says defragment complete. And now we are finished. I close this out and your computer should run a little quicker and a little better. Okay, I thank you for watching and listening and I hope it helped you guys out. And I will see you again next time. Please, if you like my channel, subscribe to it and view my other videos. Thank you very much and we'll catch you again next time.